Jesus said that the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Mm. The Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. You see, here we see the Son of Man because Jesus had two, two natures. One is the human nature because his mother was a human and then the God's nature, divine nature, because his father was God. So, as the Son of Man, he came for the man. He didn't become an angel to save angels, he became a man to save men. So it's such a privilege to be a man, a human being, because Jesus became human being to save human beings. To come, to be born of a virgin, holy child, holy blood, but yet as a man he was born in order to fulfill the law in our place. Because the man was not able to fulfill the law. That's why Jesus came to fulfill the law in our place and then to die for our guilt, for our sins and to suffer death in our place. As a man, he, was, he had body, he had blood, he, he shed his blood on the cross for us. And then, after his death, he was raised from the dead and is still alive. And he is the life and he is the resurrection. So as the Son of Man, He came for men to save us, to seek and save. And He's our example. We have to go and seek and save men. But in 1 John 3, 8, the Bible says that, the second part of the verse, that the Son of God, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that He might destroy the works of the devil. So as the Son of God, He came to destroy the devil and to destroy His works. So there is the other part of His ministry, not directed directly to, to man, but directed against the devil and His works. He came, he came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to destroy sin, to destroy death, to destroy the curses, to destroy the demons, to destroy the sicknesses. So he came to destroy the works of the devil. And in the ministry we also have to have this other part, destruction of the works of of the devil. In Luke chapter 4 we can see how, the Je how Jesus started his ministry. Luke chapter 4, you know in Luke chapter 3 the Holy Spirit came on Jesus by the river Jordan when he was baptized in water by John the Baptist. So the, the Holy Spirit came on him in the form of a dove. But we have to understand that first Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, in Luke chapter 1, the angel said to Mary that the Holy Spirit will overshadow her. The power of God is going to come upon her and she will conceive and the child will be called the Son of God. It's probably about the 18th verse, Luke 1, 18, I think. So, you see that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, not by man, not by the seed of man, but the seed of God, which is the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit conceived him in the womb of Mary. And he was born with perfect blood, no sin. 
But yet, during these three, 30 years of, minute of, of life, we, we do not find in the Bible any miracle, any healing, deliverance, resurrection, or ministry of Jesus for 30 years. The Holy Spirit didn't come yet on him. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, but yet the Holy Spirit was not upon him. So at the River Jordan, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came, came upon him. And we see that in, in, uh, in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. So then he was full of the Holy Ghost. And also, because he is our example, we also have to be born by the Holy Spirit. We have to be born again. But then we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit or baptized in the Holy Spirit, which are two different experiences. And now we see Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit began to lead Jesus in the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And we have to understand that temptations of the devil doesn't mean that we have sinned. Everybody is tempted, Jesus was tempted, but we, he didn't fall into sin. So it is our decision if we are going to sin or not. The devil is tempter, he comes to tempt us, but we have the, the freedom to decide. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they came to end, they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone, that it, it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written. It's amazing that Jesus was attacked by the devil, tempted by the devil. And he didn't say, Hey, hey devil, I'm, I'm the Son of God. I'm the Lord. You don't know who I am. You know, now he used the word of God as a weapon because the Bible says that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So he began to use the word of God. This is the strongest weapon against the devil. And he said every time when the devil attacked him, he said, it is written and he knew what is written. And he quoted Deuteronomy every time. I don't know why. Very heavy book. And then we see all these attacks and then the devil finished. And the, the verse 13 says, when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. For a kairos. Okay. And then verse 14 says, And Jesus returned in the power, in the dynamis of the Spirit in Galilee. You see, he was filled with the Holy Spirit in the desert. The Holy Spirit led him into the desert, filled with the Holy Spirit. But then, when he was tempted, he overcame the devil there. He fasted, he prayed, and he came out with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we can see that there is a way to release the power of God, to release the anointing. It is one thing to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's another thing to be able to release the power. So I be believe that fasting was very important. He was fasting 
40 days. And he released the power. He fought the devil and overcame. And he grew in power. So when he came out, he came in the power of the Spirit, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And then in verse 18, we see when he entered into the synagogue in Nazareth, he made a statement from the Bible. He read the book of Isaiah, the prophet, and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. These are the first words of Jesus when he entered in his ministry that are written in the Bible. He didn't say, I am. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So he gave credit to the Holy Spirit. And he showed us that even if he was the Son of God, he trusted and he was moved by the Holy Spirit and his power. So the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me. And then we see that here, I see that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the, Sp the Holy Spirit upon us. So when the Holy Spirit is upon us, we are anointed. When He is not upon us, we are not anointed. So the anointing is when God and man are together. When God and man work together. When man works separated from God, it's not anointed. We can preach, we can teach, we can do everything, religious works, without the Holy Spirit, no power. And Jesus said, without me, we, you can do nothing. So it's very important that we do the things together with Him, so that we are not alone. And then He said, He anointed me for a reason, not only to feel good, but there are here five things that are important. Number one, to preach the gospel to the poor. And uh, it's poor financially, but also poor spiritually. Because there are people that are not poor spiritually. They are not hungry. The poor is hungry. They are not hungry for God. They are not hungry for the presence. They are not hungry for the word. And you try to do something uh, because they are relatives, for example. They are friends. You, you want to help them, but you cannot help. You have to follow the spirit and go to the poor, go to the hungry. And sometimes we leave the hungry and we go to the other people that, that are not willing to receive. So he said... He sent me to preach the gospel, the gospel, not just human doctrine on the Bible. We have to preach the gospel, we have to preach the word of God as it is. Because today there are many, too many things that we say they are the, words of, the word of God, but actually they are some human uh, teachings, doctrines, on the Bible with some principles that actually have no power, no presence in, of, the, of God. So he said, anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, number one. Number two, he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You see that the people are very sick, not only physically, and mostly in the soul, in the heart. Today, the people were feel rejected. Different kinds of uh, uh, sicknesses in the of the soul, and uh, so we, the, the the Lord gave us the anointing to heal the people that are broken-hearted. Their soul is broken. We have to heal them and, and the power and the presence of, the, of God helps us to do that. And then number three, to preach deliverance to the captives, not 
only salvation, but he said deliverance. So people need not only to be healed, not only to be saved, but also they have to be delivered. Some of the people have to be delivered by demon, of demons. And they even didn't do, do not know about this. But we have to preach it. If we do not preach it, we are not going to believe it. If we do not believe it, we are not going to do it. Sometimes I see, I, I thank God for this church because I see that here you are on fire. I see that you love the Lord and, uh, and uh, uh, you are in a healing ministry. I can sense it since, since I came, I, I feel it. There is a change in this church. Praise the Lord for that. And this is something that you have to keep. You have to go on to continue with it. And uh, so, uh, but it's very important what we preach. Because what we preach, we are going to believe. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And uh, we have to preach it in order to believe it and then to do it. And then it says, recovering of sight to the blind. So the spiritually blind, physically blind, this means healing. The Holy Spirit helps us to heal the people and also to open their eyes. Their eyes can be opened by teaching. The teaching up opens the eyes of the people. And also the prophetic word opens the eyes of the people. And then number five, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Which means not only to preach deliverance, but to do it. Because today there are some places where they preach it, but they do not do it. And we have to to do it because faith without works is dead. Amen. So, this is the ministry of Jesus. And you see the anointing came on him to do these five things. To save the lost, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance, to open the eyes, and to set the captives free to preach the acceptable ear of the Lord, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I, I want to go to, to the book of Acts 10.38 because we can see uh, Peter preaching and revealing us in one verse the ministry of Jesus. And Luke wrote it. It is, it is Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The ministry of Jesus in one verse. And this is what Peter said. Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, he didn't say the son of God. He said Jesus of Nazareth. He was emphasizing his human nature here. Because Jesus is our example. Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power. Which means that uh, the man needs to be anointed in order to do something for God. Jesus of Nazareth, God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good. Not bad. Because sometimes the people think that he, he, he is doing bad things. Like, for example, giving cancer, killing people, sicknesses. This is bad. Cancer is not good. If it is good, why do people go to the doctor? And then it says, doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. And we see that the healing is good. And we see here, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit together healing all people, not some of them. So he is not wanting the, to heal one, but not the other. Healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So sickness, what is? Oppression of the devil. You see how clearly here the gospel is made by Peter. In one verse we can see the ministry of Jesus who is our example. 
healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Why he did it? Because God was with him. If uh, it was not from God, then God was not, would not be with him. But God was with him. So Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And then we, we are going to see how Matthew saw the ministry of Jesus again in one verse. And we can see it in Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. Matthew said here, and, and by the way, you just see how many times it says, went about, went about, not stayed in one place. He was going, and he said, go and preach the gospel. And you see here what, what the Bible says. Jesus went about, again, all the villages, the cities and villages, and doing here what? Teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and this is the word of God. Number one in his ministry was the word. And here the word we have in two parts. One is teaching in the synagogues, which corresponds to us today teaching in the churches. So what we have to do? Teach in the churches. This means make the word clear to the people in order that they may grow spiritually. And then preaching the gospel of the kingdom, this means preaching the gospel to the lost. So preaching is proclaiming with power. Jesus is alive. He is raised from the dead. Do you believe it? Do you want to receive it? This is preaching. But teaching, you just clarify the things. So he was teaching, he was preaching, he was giving the word of God. And then the Bible says in verse, uh, in the same verse, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So I, I wanted to show you these two parts of his ministry, which is very important. One is giving the word, and the other is action. Now God works with two hands. One is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word. And today He works with the Word. We have to preach it. If we do not preach the Word, we are not going to see the results. And then the other hand, the Bible says the right hand of God is power. So, the right hand of God is the Holy Spirit. So God works with the Holy Spirit and with the Word of God together. As you see in, the, in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the waters and then God said, let there be light and there was light. And Psalm 33, 6, Psalm 33, 6 says that the Lord created the earth with his word and all the hosts of heaven by the breath of his mouth, by the spirit of his mouth. So again you see that God doesn't work with one thing. Because today many say the word, the word, the word, the word, but forgive, uh, forget the spirit. Or the spirit, the spirit, forget the word. No. Both of them. Word and spirit all, all, always together have to work. So now, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So the spirit uses one weapon, one tool, and this is the word of God. When we release the word, it will be released, the power of the spirit. Okay, so now we see in verse 35 here, that Jesus was teaching, preaching, and healing. Healing is the action. And the same thing, Mark 
In chapter 1, verse 39, Mark sees it a, a little bit different from uh, Matthew. And he says, Mark 1, 39, he preached in their synagogues. So, he said it one, with one word, preached in the synagogues. This is the word. And then he said, and uh, cast out demons. The healing, he saw it as casting out demons. So, if we have to combine the two verses in Matthew and Mark, we are going to see this. Jesus was teaching in the synagogues as we have to teach in the churches. He was preaching to the lost the gospel of the kingdom in order for them to be saved. He was casting out demons and he was healing the sick. This four. Preaching, teaching, deliverance and healing. Four parts in maybe most important in the ministry. It is not all but it is the basics of his ministry. And then we are going to go to, to Matthew chapter 10 to see what Jesus commanded his disciples. He had 12 disciples, he had 70 disciples, and now we can see the 12 disciples. Verse 1, Matthew 10, verse 1. And when he, when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them, he says power, but the word is authority, against exousia. Authority against unclean spirits, to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So what he did, he actually wanted his disciples to do. But how he did it? First, he called them. It's very important for people to be called by God. Not just to go, but to be called. When God calls them, then he gives them authority. When they receive this authority, why they receive it? Because it is a weapon, a tool to do the work of God. Without authority, you cannot do it. And then this authority was not political, not economical authority, it was spiritual authority against spirits, against sickness. You see that spirits, evil spirits and sicknesses are our enemies. We war, we, we, we do wage against them, if we understand it. So he gave authority over them to cast them out, to heal the people. And then in verse 5, Jesus said only one word, I will say, commanded them, from verse 5, this is the word I will use, commanded them. So this is not just a recommendation, this was command, saying, and verse 7, the kingdom Preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Number one, preach. Number one, the word. What? The kingdom of God. The authority, the power of God. Because the kingdom of God is power, not words. And then verse 8. Heal the sick. It was commanded to the twelve. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you, you have received freely give. Now, here, when we read it, we say, okay, but he said that to his twelve, but we are not of the twelve. And I will show you another verse that is in Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. And we will start with verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So he received all authority. Go you therefore again, go. Teach all nations, or make, make disciples of all nations. He emphasized here the teaching, the 
discipleship, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So Jesus said, what I have commanded you, you have to teach others. It's not only for you, not only for the twelve. So in, the, in chapter 10, when, when he said, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, it is not only for them. He said, teach them to observe all things. Of course, it is not all, but it is important part. To observe all things that I commanded you. And then, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So here we can see the so-called Great Commission of the Lord Jesus Christ to us. Go and make disciples. Go and teach. As he did it, we have to do it. We have to teach the nations. And then in Mark 16, as, as you read it, Mark 16, from verse 15, the Bible says here, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who... What? But he that believeth not shall be damned. So he said here, go and preach the gospel to every creature. Again, go, 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 go. And preach the gospel to every creature. This is evangelism. So, you see, Mark sees the evangelism. And Matthew sees the discipleship. But these are the two most important parts of his ministry of the word. Teaching and preaching. And then... He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall, shall be damned. And this science, in English, it, it, it uh, sounds very good. This science, like signatures. So, God's message has signatures. And when the word of God is preached, it has to be signed. As you, when, when you receive one document, if it is not signed, you, you say, no, 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 there is no signature. I cannot receive it. I cannot believe it. So God signs his message. These signatures, these signs shall follow them that believe. And even I, I read it like this, because there are no... Uh, what, what is the word? Points in, in English. This sign shall follow them that, them that believe in my name. Mm -hmm. This sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out demons. Number one. You see, what a sign. But what, what, what is this sign? This is a sign of faith. Yes. According to Jesus Christ. Yes. Not according to today. <laughs> Our days. They shall cast out demons. Number one. Number two, they shall speak in, with new tongues. He didn't say some will speak, some, some will not. They shall speak new tongues. This is a sign of faith. Number three, they shall take up serpents. What is this? I believe this is authority over the ministers of the devil. As Paul said to the magician, the hand of the Lord is upon me. And now you are, you are not going to see the sun for a time. And he became blind for some time. Because we, we are given authority not only over spirits, but also over the ministers of the devil in order for them to, be, to repent and be saved. Amen. And then he said, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. This means protection, supernatural protection from God for us. 
And then number five, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall be healed. So the Lord gives us true faith, these signs of healing as you do it in the church. Praise the Lord. And now, I want to go to Luke chapter 24 in connection with the Holy Spirit because Jesus emphasized very much the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in the ministry. And he said to his disciples, it is chapter 24, Luke 24, verse 49. He said to his disciples, stay in the city. I send you the promise of my Father. When we read about the promise of the Father, it is the Holy Spirit. I, I just want to share this with you. God gave two major gifts. Gift number one for the whole world. He gave His Son for everyone who believes, not to be condemned, but to have eternal life. So gift number one is the Son of God for the whole world. Whosoever receives Him, whosoever accepts Him, whosoever believes in Him, shall not perish but have eternal life. This is the gift for the whole world. And why? Because Jesus is the eternal life. Whosoever receives Jesus, receives the eternal life. And then gift number two, he gave to his children. He gave to the church. And this is the promise, the gift of the Father for his children, and it is the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is for the world. The Holy Spirit is for the church. And when we believe, when we receive Jesus, we have also to receive the Holy Spirit. When you receive Jesus, you are born again and you receive the eternal life. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the presence and the power of God. When you receive Jesus, you go to heaven. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you can work on the earth. Because without the Holy Spirit, you can do nothing. Okay, so here, Jesus said, uh, verse 9, uh, 40, 49, I send you the promise of the Father upon you, but tell you in the city of Jerusalem, stay. It's the only place where he says stay. Every time he says go, 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 now stay. Why? Because before you go, you need power. Before you go, you need somebody to be with you. So he says stay in the city until you be endued or clothed with power from on high. So this is not human power, this is, this is not earthly power, it is supernatural power that comes from heaven. Like Elisha, he said to Elijah, I want one thing, I, I want your spirit. I want even double. I want the spirit and what he received. He received, what is the the jacket? How do you call it? The mantle. The mantle. Yeah. He received the mantle. This is the spirit. He was clothed. Yeah. So he rented his clothes yeah. and took the mantle of Elijah. So we need the mantle of God. We need the Holy Spirit to be clothed with him from on high. And then... Uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, very important verse, very famous. You shall receive power. You shall receive dynamis, dynamite. When? After that, the Holy Ghost came upon you. So, first comes the presence, then comes the power. Without the presence, there is no power. And then he said, you shall be witnesses. Not only you are going to testify, you shall be witnesses. And to me, 
in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the world. So you shall be witnesses in Gambuso, Maseron, Murcia, Spain, and to the ends of the world with the power of the Holy Spirit. John 20, 21, let's see this verse. Then Jesus said unto them again, Peace be unto you. This is after his resurrection. He visited his disciples. And the first verse, peace. It's, it's very good. When, when, when the Lord speaks to us, the first words are, Fear not. Be not afraid. Fear not. Only believe. So the first words of Jesus is fear not. And the first thing the devil does is to bring fear. So when something comes and carries fear with it, it's not from God. God gives you, God gives you faith. He makes you brave. So, uh, and he's, he said, peace, shalom unto you. As my father had sent me, even so sent you sent I you. As the Father sent him, so Jesus sent us. He is our example. So there is no difference. We have to do the same. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive you the Holy Ghost. What did he say? I send you, but receive you the Holy Spirit. Because with Him you can do everything. And then I will finish with the verse that is in Luke chapter 10, 27. Luke chapter 10, 27. This is the motive of the whole ministry. And this is the great commandment. He said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. So what is the motive of the ministry, the great commandment? We have to, to do everything from love to God and love to the people that perish. Love to the people in the church, not to look great, not that the people are going to talk about us, but that the souls may be saved and that the people may be trained, become disciples, sons and daughters of God, and that the church may overcome in this world for the glory of God. Let the kingdom of God come and let the will of God be done Amen. in earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. God bless you.